In this tutorial, we'll examine some of the remaining uh, components we have, like the mover speed control and the mover spinner direction sprite swap. They are simple components which can add some nice functionality to the game. So this is the last tutorial we left off with. But before anything, let's, let's just do some organizing. Maybe we should have done this in the beginning, but it's never too late. All right, so just a couple of game objects. All right, and let's just put the audio inside this one and name it audio manager. This way things are easier to control and see. All right, so let's make the enemy, perhaps let's duplicate it and make a curve wave. So you can think of this tutorial in the, at the first part of this tutorial as maybe a quick recap of some of what we have done so far. I'm going to remove the bar control and the handle weapon and the patrol mover as well and delete the weapons and the UI and add from shmob baby agent enemy mover curve mover. All right. So, so okay. So now this is a curve, uh, a curve, a curve, an enemy with a curve mover. And let's just make a curve wave. And replace this organized wave with the small baby wave, curve wave. Give it a reference of this new curve wave. Five enemies, 0.5 seconds in between, speed of five, and let's loop it and let's make it follow the path. Let's make the points of the curve. So basically, the enemies just go like this, and it's also disabled because everything is spawned by the level controller and we need to connect the wave here so that we are using the new wave let's just play and we see we have the enemy and they loop back so 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 far we haven't done anything new just make quick made quick changes and now we will add the mover mover spinner Let's add it for the player. If you play, you'd notice that the player is very static. It, it doesn't feel like moving when it's moving from the right to the left. So we are going to go to Agent, Component, Mover Spinner. By the way, the things which are listed under Agent are things which require an agent. An agent basically is the player or enemy or missile or mines. So these are all agents. So a mover spinner, for example, can't be for, for now at this script version, can't be applied to any object. It has to be applied to a player or an enemy. So I'm going to put the player mover over here. Let's give it the spin speed of 160 and limit it at an angle of 90. If we keep it at normal, it will just rotate and be limited at 90. The best thing for the player is usually the spin by direction. So that once you go to the right, it will rotate you see over here if it's rotating if you want to rotate it to, to the other direction just make it on a negative so you see now this makes such a huge difference and we can also apply it to the enemies so let's go to the curve enemy over here small baby wave and Oops, <laughs> I made a mistake. We just go to the agent, component, and mover spinner. Let's give it a speed of 160. And let's let's see the normal with a speed of zero, with a limit of zero. So you see the enemies are just rotating around around themselves. 
if you choose spin by direction and let's say you give it a limit as well it depends on the direction where the enemy is headed it changes the rotation all right so that's that's the mover spinner we can have a look at the mover speed control which is this one is actually located in the utilities because it because it can be applied to anything so we have the mover speed control let's just play and see what happens as you see it's it's not moving at all why because you see this multiplies uh, the speed so let's say if we have this curve this means that the this script multiplies with the speed of 1 with a value of 1 so nothing changes if we play it has the exact same speed but before that it was multiplying it by 0 because it had no curve let's change it for for this curve so now what's happening that the x axis it represents the time in seconds so in the first seconds it's multiplied by 0 then by 1 and then it continues by 1 but perhaps if we use ping pong it means that the first second it, the speed will be multiplied by 0 then by the end of the first second by 1 then by the second second back to 0 then by 1 let's just play I, I, some of these things are much easier if you just try it if you see here so it's has this warm like behavior but let's change the curve to make it a little nicer so that it eases in and out a little bit and maybe it's not such a good idea to keep it by zero and let's play so that's the mover speed control it's it's a little script I don't know how how many of you would find it useful, but it's it it can you can have some nice tricks with it. So that's the mover speed control and the mover spinner done. We'll just have a quick look at the direction sprite swap and the direction sprite swap advance. For that, let's just go to the player. So that the direction sprite swap only applies to two D sprites. So what we have now is a 3D object. Let's just replace it with a sprite. We'll find one from the sprites, spaceships. Let's just drop this one. It's too big. And let's disable this one because we don't want to have two, two visuals. And let's disable the mover or keep the mover spinner just to show you what happens. You see, it's with 2D, with 2D objects, better to change. You can't really use the mover spinner, and we need to update the flash effects with the new visual. So let's go to Schmop Baby and Agent Component Direction Sprite Swap. We'll start with the basic one. The mover is the player. The one, the target renderer is the object which changes the illustration. And this is the idle movement. I'm just drawing, dragging and dropping a, a standard sprite. Now the up direction means what the, what the sprite will change, what image will change the sprite when, it, when you move up. For example, let's use this UFO image. And for the down, instead of putting an image, I'm going to check flip Y. So it means whatever image you put in here, the the other will be replaced with a flipped version and for the right direction I'm going to use this blue and for the left this yellow I know this example <laughs> the the images we are we have used is not is not the best images are not the best images to use but it gives an idea so you see when I move forward it goes to this UFO backward to this one right changes to that image and left to that image and that basically is the direction sprite swap and we have the direction sprite swap advance which is that it, it has it's exactly the same only if you have more controls we have uh, more directions the up right down left and you could use another sprite from another image so that you don't have to 
uh, plug it in twice or if you change it it can easily change on the other one and you could you could choose to flip y and x I'm just going to save it and to make it up for you for using these inappropriate images I'm going to show you for example this one um, let's just you know to show you so you see this one uses appropriate images you could see how the plane reacts and this actually can be used for both the, the player and the enemy just based on the direction of movement one final thing we can show is the animated sprite effects which will be related to the to, to the objects control we, we will use in the tutorial after that let's just show you an explosion for example from the prefabs let's just drag and drop this one and remove the animated sprite effects which is already connected to it and hit the play button uh, as you notice it just keeps looping endlessly let's put this one with the animated sprite effects the script to it now in, in many cases you don't want the explosion to keep playing endlessly and you don't want it to be in the scene for example you you destroy an object and you just want the explosion to appear once so this script this is what what it does it just destroys the object after it plays once or you have the option to disable it and you could you could also this delay that that process so let's see what happens when this one is played it plays only once and it was destroyed from the hierarchy and with this these are the components we just have examined and we'll take a look now at the objects control and perhaps the spawn position and the point constraints.